I'm obsessed with blood work, so I get my blood work done a lot. And I'm always making notes, so I, I test different theories. I'll, I'll, I'll run a month of some certain supplements, and then I'll get my blood work done. And then I'll change them up to something different, or I'll subtract a couple things and do my blood work again. Because this, for me, is really like, uh, I, w I wanna know exactly what is happening to my body internally when I'm taking these supplements. And I wanna be able to speak to it firsthand, not just reading literature, because I feel like everybody's different. Everybody is different. What it is, Brad Lee back again with another episode of Dropping Bombs today in the studio. As always, folks, I got a real treat for you. My man, Aaron Williamson's in the house. What's cracking? I knew I'd be on here one of these days. I feel like I made it. You have made it. <laughs> it is official. <laughs> what is that you're drinking right there? That is uh, none of your business. Exactly. <laughs> see, when I see you, and folks, if you guys don't know who Aaron is, number one, you can follow him at Aaron Williamson, just like it sounds, A-A-Ron. That's it. That's how everyone knows me. A-A-Ron. It looks like V. V. Williamson. Yeah. Middle, like middle, Victor. Yep. Yeah. Aaron V. Williamson on social media. Go check him out. Dude's freaking built like a brick shit house. Like, not just built, but dude, like, proportionate and, 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 and chiseled. Like, when people, like, you don't look bodybuilder-ish. You look freaking like yeah. an action figure gi joe yeah action figure gi joe <laughs> that That's was right. the whole, that was the whole goal to be more marketable i started with bodybuilding i shifted into hollywood and now i i just want to create a physique that everyone wants to bring them into my my world of fitness to help yeah them. and by the way guys if you guys uh haven't heard of him you probably heard of some of his clients like the rock like old zach efron like old uh james brolin jk uh Simmons, Simmons, um, and a host of others you may not have heard of, but you're you're the you're the trainer to the celebs, a lot of the celebrities. Yeah, yeah, it's been a it's been an interesting journey training with these guys, but I kind of I became the action guy for in Hollywood South. Why is that? Uh, I'm an intense guy, so I I just gradually shifted into the the action genre where people can handle pain. And actually have a work ethic to to get to the gym and want to transform their physique for the for these action movies so quickly qu quickly very quickly so that's was, that's the key that had my interest you you got to get people ready to be on a movie set quick yeah i'm the guy that they call when they're in a crunch or when they know they need to transform someone in a very short amount of time and that's what i just became good at 30 60 90 days I can I can change everything. Now, is there any Anavar, Equipoise, Winstrol V, <laughs> Testosterone, Deca? No, not not with not with the clients I work with in Hollywood because I don't have enough trust in dealing with that side of things in Hollywood. Because if you make one wrong move, your career is done. So that was something that I had to learn. You know, being a bodybuilder, there are anabolics in there. But going into this space, it's really about understanding the human body, understanding food ma manipulation, proper supplementation, health and longevity protocols. When you can understand all that, you can make a dramatic transformation in a short amount of time. But it takes the client to be bought in and, and committed. Yeah. So now, dude, you're you're working with my boy Andy Elliott. You got you got a whole fitness division cranking for him. Yeah. And you're like the freaking King Kong of that deal now purpose and there's a lot of entrepreneurs ceos getting getting your benefit and people can by the way if you're listening you guys can go get the same benefit now because you've brought it to the world now what's it called before i forget so it's it's earn it all uh earn it all academy.com is where you can go to find out more information but essentially we've got some different programs built out we're in the process of building some more out some some really one of them is really crazy. It's Dark 3.0, which is going to be an experience. But uh, the goal was... What's that mean, Dark 3.0? Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a lifestyle project, basically. So you're coming into this with, uh, with, with buying in with 75 hard, and then you just gradually work into our program. But it's about establishing those 
new lifestyle habits up front before you can really get into the type of training that we're going to bring you into. And then there's an experience on top of it that you can pay for. That's, that's one-on-one with us. You'll actually come to Scottsdale, spend time with us. You know, we, we're, we're still finalizing the details on this, <clears throat> but my whole goal with what we're doing right now is I've always been an army of one. Like I've, I've loved fitness. It saved my life. I came back from Iraq in 09, a fucking broken mess and <clears throat> ended up losing everything I had. I was fucking homeless. I didn't know where to turn to. I was ready to go back overseas. I was ready to take my own life. It was fucking miserable. But the one thing that I always had was fitness and no one could ever take that from me. So I got certified as a personal trainer and just jumped into it. And that's where I say, you know, destiny would present itself. And I, I landed literally right smack dab in Hollywood. There were more films and TV shows being shot in Louisiana when I was there than anywhere else in the world. So I knew there was something there. I met Zach Efron within a few months, and that's when we uh, we did a movie called The Lucky One, which is about a Marine Iraq veteran. And that was kind of the entrance into film and TV for me. I knew there was something there. And I just made it my mission to hit every production office every week, gave out free training sessions um, so that they understood how I how I trained, what my transformations entailed. So in doing all that, I call it guerrilla warfare. I just became the default guy. So any production that came into town, I got them, which is why my roster is so, you know, so long. But in in in, in navigating through Hollywood, it was a very superficial place. I'm a Marine, so for me, it's about purpose. And at the end of the day, when I go home every night, I just felt fucking empty because there's no, like, I don't get into the superficial, materialistic nonsense of what Hollywood represents. So in 2020, I shifted when the industry shut down. I launched my own fitness business. And I realized at the time I could only take on so many people being a one-man show. So when Andy and I met and he asked me to come over, I knew that this is where I could really make a massive impact, um, really globally, because we can work with anyone across the world. And I can share everything that I've done over the years in Hollywood these dramatic transformations, I'll say, you know, some of the top transformations in cinematic history I've been a part of. So I want to share everything that I'm able to do with people who are just really trying to figure out how to, how to even start somewhere because everyone's so confused and so lost right now that they don't know where to start. So this is the beauty of my program is it's a starting place that introduces you to health and longevity which is going to add years to your life that you've already shaved off. So it's like we got we got some catching up to do. Got to get back. Because when we're born, we're born pretty fucking healthy, wouldn't you say? I would say so. We start dying the second we're born. Right on. Um, but, dude, obviously every dude on, on earth would want to look jacked like you. How much pain and agony do you have to go through on a regular day to get that? I say there are different levels. I'm extreme because when I go into the gym, I'm seeking pain. Like I want to inflict as much pain on myself as I possibly can because. Pain to the where, where like you're shaking, your legs are shaking. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's so much beyond that, though. It, it's There's a mental aspect of it that I think most people can't comprehend because they don't look at fitness the same way as I do. But if you look at any seasoned lifter and you ask them about fitness and training, you'll find nine times out of 10, it's more about the mental than it is the physical. Um, so when I'm in there, I'm looking for growth. I'm, I'm looking to see how far I can push myself because at, at the end of it all, I'm going to grow physically by pushing myself to that pain, you know, to that pain threshold. But I say, if you want to take it to a level five, let's go to a level five. If you want to take it to a level 10, there's a lot of pain, but it's about what your definition is of, of transformation and what you're willing to endure. The more pain you can, uh, you can accept, embrace, the more suffering, the quicker your transformation is going to be. Mm. Folks better pay attention to that one. Because, again, I mean, ultimately, what I always tell people is, like, I'm in no rush. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, I mean... Right now in society, everyone's seeking comfort. Well, it's not comfort that I seek, but it's also not 
extremism. Yeah. And, and like, dude, like, like, like I can look pretty good and live a much better life than that person. That's all extreme and, you know, weighing out his food and yeah. carries around fucking, you know, prep meals everywhere he goes and never, he never gets ketchup, you know, never tasted ranch his whole fucking life. Like, you know, but, yeah. but you know, I, I admire people like that. Why? Cause dude, that is some seriously disciplined shit yeah. in my b mind though. I got a crazy mind. Why? Why? What, 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 why? Like why sacrifice all of that joy and comfort just I, to have a little bit more shredded quads? Well, for me, how do I put this? <clears throat> I, uh, I, I think I just view life differently. Uh, and it's, it's for me, it, I'm so deep rooted in purpose. You know, I, I, I went through my Marine Corps career. I was in Iraq for an extended period of time. I came back with a fucked mind. I was a completely different person when I came back. I lost people who were close to me. And but you I, were, you were already buff then. Mm, I mean, buff with water. Like I was, I was, uh, I was, <laughs> that's, what I I was that's what I am, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, bu bu I'm water buff. I'm a water buffalo. Yeah. Just, you know, inflamed because I'm not, I, <laughs> I wasn't, I wasn't doing everything I knew I could do. Yeah, I'm uh, inflamed. Yeah. But I'm I mean, not buff. I'm inflamed. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Dude, that's how I start telling people. People say, dude, I can see you're starting to work out again, man. You're getting in shape. I go, nah, I'm just inflamed. Yeah. It's just inflammation. It's just, it's, it's just inflammation. It's actually very unhealthy. I should go back to just straight up fluffy. Fluffy's more healthy than inflamed, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, fluff and buff. But serious, dude. Well, it's, it's you were uh, in shape though. Yeah, I was, I was in shape. But but what I what I realized was coming back and trying to integrate into the real world. Um, I felt I had a, a sense of responsibility to, to do something with my life. And that's where my, my mind kind of shifted in terms of how I view life and what I want out of it. Relationships haven't worked for me because I'm too work focused. Um, I really want to create a legacy. I want to do something that's never been done before. And I feel like I'm going to be able to do that with, with Andy and, and the mission that we're on together. So uh, yeah. by, by nature, I'm a serious guy. I don't fuck around a lot. I don't, I don't party. I don't drink. I just work. And, and people say, well, what do you do outside of work? I train. That's it? Yeah, that's it. I mean, I'll watch a movie or I'll, I'll try and get some sleep and, and relax. But that's like the extent of my life. But I'm, and I'm fine with it because at the end of the day, I feel like I'm living a life of, uh, of, of purpose and where I'm serving others because I want to help do my part in get, getting this country back. Where this country is right now, being a veteran, having sacrificed, having lost close people to me. Uh, I'm, I'm so fucking mad right now. And, and for me, if I can do something impactful through fitness, then I'm going to dive all into it. Well, not only that, but like if we could get everybody in the United States in shape and everybody in the United States was walking around ripped instead yeah. of inflamed and dying and diseased and lazy and fat and stupid, and naive, mm -hmm. dude, that would be a hell of a thing. And believe it or not, Folks, fitness is the beginning, I believe, of it all. Because, again, if you want to change somebody, I found that if you change their state, their mental state, their physical state, it, it somehow creates a momentum that, that they want to continue. Yeah. Like when I started intermittent fasting, I want to ask you about that. Intermittent fasting, boom, all of a sudden I see the weight coming off. Now, when I say, when most people say lose weight, Aaron, you know what they want. They want to lose fat. They don't yeah. want to lose muscle. Yeah. And, and, and quite frankly, I don't care if I'm 275 as long as I look like a badass. So it's not the weight I'm trying to lose. It's the fat. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to gain shape, you know, muscularity, vascularity, and lose fat. Yeah. And so when I started intermittent fasting, everyone was telling me, oh, you're going to lose muscle because you're, you know, you might be losing weight, but it's muscle. Dude, listen, I've been getting DEXA scans. I've lost body fat. I've increased muscle mass. And I've only been eating once a day, sometimes, sometimes twice. And quite frankly, not even that healthy. Why? Well, because I spend 18 hours fasting, six hours eating. And after 18 hours, it's like, fuck, I'm going to have me some blue cheese. <laughs> so I eat some blue cheese wedge, nice steak, 
Now I'm full. The window damn near passes. I'm still not hungry. Sometimes I don't eat it all again. And we're oh, that's going to be bad. But look at the results it's producing. I think in the short term, that's good. I just want to kickstart. Yeah, and 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 but where where that needs to go is you've got to make sure as you continue to get deeper into this this fasting because you're on the extreme end, which is called like OMAD, one meal a day. You want to make sure that you're getting all the protein, at least the protein that you need. Or? Or what? Or what? Well, so, I mean, ideally you want to, you have a set of macros that you want to meet for the day. Doing it the way you're doing it is sometimes it's hard because if you, if you need to get in 2,000 or 2,500 calories, that's a big-ass meal. And that's a lot of protein. So that's why I would say um, focus on protein first, which is obviously going to make you more satiated and full, which is what you're feeling right now, having a big steak, which is I'd assume you're probably getting anywhere from 70 to 100 grams of protein. Is that what a steak is? Well, I've seen the steak you eat. Yeah. Well, it's just a 14-ounce New York strip. Yeah. And, and what are you doing, like your your uh, your – tuna carpaccio with it of course yeah so you're getting i mean you're getting a good amount of protein for that meal but over the course of what your body needs to maintain all the muscle mass you have because you're a big guy you need to get more protein in um and then you're getting you know you're getting good fats through the steak blue cheese is you know blue cheese there's fat there but um but look at the results now again you you might be looking from a different perspective you're like brad you're inflamed you're fat you got a lot of water right there but based on what i look like before to what i look like now i look way better my shirts went down a size my pants went down two sizes yeah and i'm not even close to being done so like if i kept this up it'll melt the fat off me and i thought to myself why not at least just start melting the fat off me yeah first well, it's the kickstart you needed to get going yeah once the momentum. you're once you're in the groove once 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 it's back into the the normal routine Yee! then you then maybe add in another meal maybe get two meals in but that, well, that's what i'm hoping i don't yeah. want to stay this forever but if that's dude my blood test by the way everything comes back flawless yeah like it's like damn dude the, my blood pressure used to be high now it's low Everything used to be bad. Now it's good. And all I, all I did was intermittent fasting. Yeah. And, and what it, if that's the secret that nobody knows? Well, I, I'm, I'm big into fasting, you know, doing a 24 hour fast a week or, you know, maybe running a few days of intermittent fasting a week. Cause it gives your body a chance to heal, to heal, to reset itself, to fix things that are wrong, you know, get rid of dead cells, you know, suboptimal cells. So you can have the right ones in there. Uh, it, it's, I say it's the fountain of youth fasting, so it's it's great, and I think everyone should do it at some point. You cold plunge, yeah, cold plunge, yeah, uh, sauna, all of it. Well, I haven't. St- I, I just bought one of those little temporary saunas, or the pop up saunas you can buy, the little cheap couple thousand dollar ones you put at the house. Yeah. So I haven't started saunaing yet, still in the box, but I cold plunge, and like it's getting cold out now. And I used to cold plunge when it was you know ninety eight at six in the morning. Because we live in Vegas and or Scottsdale, same thing. But now, dude, it's 40. Yep. And now cold plunging is a whole different game. Yeah. This is that mental push that everyone needs, that 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 seeking discomfort, seeking, seeking. I say the word suffer. I love using the word suffer. I have my clients right on their bathroom mirror because I want them to see it every day. I was just up in uh, St. Louis working with a client, uh, and we talked on the phone, and we talked about suffering and he's like, yeah, he's like, I love it. When we got there, I took him through the session. He's like, I understand what you mean now. Because what what I thought suffering was to what I just went through are two completely different things. And then you add on the nutrition on top of it. That's why I say there are levels to this. Where do you ultimately want to take it to and how fast do you want to get there? Because that's going to be the, the program that you're going to follow. Yeah, and that's why you were called into the movies because, like, this dude needs to look like this in six weeks when we start filming. Yeah, and and for instance, like Josh Brolin is is an example of the transformation that we did for Old Boy. The, I mean, there was a bunch of interviews about it. The movie, <laughs> the movie didn't do great, but uh, the transformation that happened was so dramatic, and it took place, um, you know, over the course of two to three weeks. And it was that's the, it. Yeah, because the. The, the production schedule didn't allow time to go through a transformation like 
Tom Hanks did in uh, Castaway. Like they they shot, and then they paused production so that he could lose all the weight, and then they went back and finished. So it was like a a year long process. That was a budget that this movie didn't have. So it was like I sat down with the producers. They asked me a bunch of questions. You know, explained the premise of what needed to be accomplished, and I just believe in what like what I can do that it was a no brainer for me before I even knew how to, how I was going to do it. I already said yes. Cause I knew I could do it. Um, afterwards is when I started to figure out how I would go through to do it. So I consulted with doctors and nutritionists and just to kind of make sure that I had as much professional advice as I could, because what, we, what we would do is ultimately not healthy. Um, and it goes back to some of the transformations that a lot of these actors have to do these days. You know, sometimes they're not healthy because they have to be so extreme. You're coming from one movie where you have to be fat right into another one where you got to look like a superhero. So there's a lot of nuances that have to come into play. But for Josh, you know, the movie was starting out. He needed to look like this low-life alcoholic, deadbeat, look like trash. And then he gets kidnapped and put in this uh, hotel room for, it was like 10 or 20 years. So that transformation of 10 or 20 years we had to accomplish in two to three weeks. And what I did was I based it around all inflammation. So everything that his body did not want is what I was feeding him every two to three hours. He hated it. But he's an actor who will go all in and make it happen. And you can see it in the movie. So inflammation by food and did some creatine and sodium loading. So he just looked like really puffy, but it was all water weight. Because if it's all water weight, you can strip it off. So that was the premise of that transformation. Um, and it just goes to show the power of food and how, how impactful it is on, on your body when you're eating things that it doesn't want versus eating things you, that it does want. And that's the, that's, the con, that's the mindset that people should have. Feed your body what it needs, not what you want to eat. Yeah, for optimal health. For optimal health, yeah. Yeah. So so <clears throat> when you're let's say I want to peel off the weight like quick and let's say a lot of it's water, how do you peel off the water weight real quick? Um I would go into a really a, a really first off a detox, which is basically first 2 weeks of just eating really specific single ingredient high quality foods. If you do that, you're going to detox itself. You're going to get rid of inflammation, and that includes water. I mean, I've had clients in the first two weeks lose 15, 18 pounds of just inflammation and water. So that's that's the initial part is to get into eating right because it's going to clear out. And so then you, what is right? Eating right is, let's just say, three to four meals a day with a with a right uh, macro balance. You know, so. When a client comes on, they fill out a questionnaire um, that gives us all the information we need from them to build out their program the right way. And, they go to, and by the way, they go to Earn It All Academy. Yeah, earnitallacademy.com. Or if you if they want to get more information, you know, immediately, they can text uh, dropping bombs to 602 And myself or one of my coaches will reach out and get on a call with them and just explain the program and see which, you know, which one is, is better for them, whether it's a customized one, a goal-based one, we're building some new ones out right now. And that's what's working dude. Cause everybody at Andy Elliott's that's in that program, they're all getting shredded. Yeah. So whatever you're doing is working. Cause I I see it. There's one dude though, that I don't know if he participates. (laughs) (laughs) There's, there might there might be a couple, but the, there's yeah. the couple of main guys down there. They don't look any better every time I go. Yeah, we're it's it's a work in progress. Do you know who I'm talking about though? Yeah, I'll bet you you do. Yeah, well, yeah. I always think to myself, like, dude, like you got to quit pretending. In my mind, they're pretending. Why? Well, how the fuck they don't get any gains in months? Because they're not doing it. How's well, everybody else getting gains and you're not? Like people always say, you know, I got a thyroid issue. I got a, I've got these issues and that it, it's because you're not doing what it requires. Yeah. Cause I've never seen anybody literally get serious about losing weight that, that physically couldn't, you may have, I'm not in the training business, but I've never met anybody that when they're fucking serious, they can lose weight. They can get in shape. They can start getting veins. Like, dude, my wife hates when I shave my arms. 
I start shaving my arms sometimes just because I want to see the vascularity. Oh, by the way, I wanted to call you the other day and ask you, like, what pops veins out? So, like, when I'm going on stage, sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll notice veins everywhere. And I'll be like, why are there veins everywhere? And then I'll go on stage and it's like it's all baby butt smooth and no <laughs> veins. I'm like, what is causing this fluctuation? Someday veins, next day no veins. It, it's I think a lot of it is based on uh, <clears throat> something you know, I ate. Car, yeah, car, carbohydrates. Um, it, and it's, it also is the, the level of leanness you are, like how lean you are will, will show more veins and not. So if you're, if you're more, yeah, but I, I didn't get more lean overnight. No, but I'm saying like, if you go, if you're eating clean, like you, like you say, you're eating the one meal a day of salad and, and steak, and then maybe, you know, you have your whatever carrot you're, cake. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that, that right there is going to push some vascularity out. And then so the carrot cake will. Yeah, but it's not something you want to do all the time, right? So if you're coming out of a fast and you're depleted, your body's going to be like a sponge for these carbohydrates. And this is the premise of cheat meals, where cheat meals ha actually have value to it because they can add that level of, of vascularity. And, and, and uh, you know, there, there's a thing as eating too clean. So it's good to have cheat meals in. It's good to have... I say be able to enjoy life a little bit, and that's where some vascularity can come out when you, when you're depleted, and then you fill it up with some carbohydrates and sodium and fats and things like that. Um, there's also like vasodilation supplements like uh, arginine and L-citrulline and things like that that can help, you know, increase oxygen into the blood and kind of make that those veins pop more. What is your daily supplement stack? Um. So I do, I, I take a lot of stuff actually. Like my morning is, you know, some, some magnesium, some ketone water, some vitamin C. Um, there's one peptide that I'm taking in, in capsule form. It's called five amino one MQ. I'm actually still learning about it. It's pretty, it's pretty new to me. We have a peptide guy who we just partnered up with. Um, his name is Steve Martinez down in Texas. So uh, the peptide space is something that I, I really want to learn more about um, because I know it is the future and there's there's a lot of benefit to to using peptides specific specifically BPC one five seven which is kind of the common one everyone knows right now. Um, but outside of that, you know, I've got my pre workout which is uh, you know sodium and some L, uh, L citrulline. I don't do pre workout. I don't do caffeine or stimulants. Um, I do a lot of you know organs. Uh, supplement heart liver things like that um some immune formula how many, how many pills you take in a day probably 50 50 pills a day over the course of a day yeah probably 50 now have you tested it for yourself to where you took them and then didn't take them and definitely there's a difference oh yeah yeah for sure yeah because i always wonder like what the what's the truth man yeah well too like i'm obsessed with blood work so i get my blood work done a lot and I'm always making notes, so I, I test different theories. I'll, I'll I'll run a month of some certain supplements, and then I'll get my blood work done, and then I'll change them up to something different, or I'll subtract a couple things and do my blood work again. Because this for me is really like uh, I w I want to know exactly what is happening to my body internally when I'm taking these supplements, and I want to be able to speak to it firsthand, not just reading literature, because I feel like everybody's different. Every body is different. So there's going to be a level of, uh, a variance to everybody when they're taking a supplement. But if I can speak to it firsthand, or I can say, I ran this for 30 days. I took this for 30 days. Like, and this is what my blood work showed. These are the impacts that I had. This is what I felt. This is how it affected my strength, my sleep. So I'm, I'm big into journaling and taking notes because I, I need to be able to refer back to all these. Well, you told me about magnesium glyconate. Yeah. Magnesium glyconate. Yeah, it's, you it's, told me to take six of those bitches before I go to sleep. Yeah, 600 milligrams with your last meal before you go to bed at night. Oh, with my last meal. I haven't been doing yeah. that. Well, it will. Because I'm fasting. Well, you, you haven't had any stomach discomfort. You're not shitting all over yourself. Nope. So, but you, I remember you saying after doing it, it worked. You were sleeping good. Well, I mean, you go to sleep quick. Like, like in other words... <laughs> Sometimes I'll watch TV for an hour and then doze off. I take that glyconate, dude. I watch TV for 10 minutes, wake up in the morning and go, oh, shit. I went to sleep quick. Yeah. And my sleep quality seemed to get better, but now it's worse. 
Your sleep quality is worse now? Yeah, not because of the glyconate. It, it was good because of the glyconate. Something else I'm doing. I don't know. Maybe fasting. I don't know. Well, that's what I was going to say. You know, there could be some sleep interruption from not getting enough food in you. You know what I mean? Maybe you're too hungry during the night. Well, you remember before my resting heart rate was like 42, 44, like extreme athlete shit. Yeah. Now it's like in the 49s, 52s. I don't like it. Even though that's still killer, according to the charts. Yeah. Dude, I, I was down in the 40s and 50s, or 40, low 40s, mid 40s. And then my PRV, is that what it's called? HRV. Heart rate, yeah. Yeah, the HRV was like 70, 80, 90. Now it's down like freaking 50, 60. Like it changed. My heart rate, my resting heart rate went up and my HRV went down. It's supposed to. So it, it, all, all this happened just since you've been doing intermittent fasting? Well, I mean, I'll go like two, three weeks without wearing my aura ring. And then sometimes I'll slap it on. And so it's been two or three weeks. I'm like, oh, fuck, there's that aura ring. And we put that on. And I woke up and, you know, I went to bed late and, you know, got up and it was like uh, jumped all over the place. It was terrible. So I tried it again. Terrible. Um, then I didn't wear it again and everything seemed to be fine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that's supposed to be funny. Dele, well, that just goes to show, I mean, there's so many variables in all this, you know what I mean? Unless you're being militant about tracking everything. That's but, so I, but I want quality sleep. Yeah. I'm sold on quality sleep. Sleep, sleep over everything. I mean, I, I'll, if someone is dead ass tired and they want to go to a gym session, I'll tell them, no, go the fuck to sleep. Like sleep is going to be, you're going to get more out of sleep than you are going dead ass tired to the gym because your workout's going to suck or it's, it's going to be, you're not going to be able to meet the markers that you want to meet if you're actually tracking it. Um, so yeah, sleep is something that I've, I've become very, uh, uh, very militant about myself just in terms of making sure that I cut off at a certain time and I get up at a certain time. And that, that window of sleep right there is extremely important because before I was, when I was back in new Orleans doing the Hollywood thing, just getting in, I was just working around the clock. I mean, for three years, I didn't sleep like a normal person. I just took naps. My body would, would shut down. It would tell me when, like, hey, dude, you need to sleep. It'd be 2 in the morning. I'd take a nap. I'd get up at 4. I'd work through the day. I'd go to sleep at 10. I'd get up at noon. It was not a healthy way to do what I was doing. But um, when I when I moved to uh, to Vegas in 2020, I was all in with sleep for the first time in my life. Do you sleep in a dark room? Dark room, cold I use, I've got a deviated septum and, um, you know, had a, a, a chlorine bomb incident over in Iraq that really fucked my nose up. So my breathing is, is bad. I need to have surgery, honestly, but I sleep with this thing called an intake breathing. It's like a magnetic strip. And then I've been doing the, uh, the mouth taping. So it's like when I go to sleep, it's a freaking science experiment. I, I look, you know, headphones on nose thing. Mouth tape. I tried that mouth tape, dude. No, it's not good for it's me. It's so good. I mean, you wake up and you just feel so different. Not me. Do you, I, I feel like someone's trying to kill me. Do you wake up and rip it off? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I, I thought that was going to be me, but but it wasn't. I actually slept through the night, and then when my alarm goes off, if I if I'm not already awake before my alarm goes off, I just feel like I'm refreshed. I just I just get up. So if I mean, I could go over sleep suggestions for people dark room colder room mm -hmm. you know no food two hours before you go to bed no no tv no, 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 TV, no screens yeah. what is it three hours i mean i i say two to three hours but if you if if that's too hard because let's just use andy for an example like his phone just doesn't stop going off so i say at least give it one hour give yourself an hour at least well see there's the problem though with me because like i'll be on my phone until I'm like, okay, it's time to go to bed. I'll plug it in, set it down, try to go to sleep. Yeah. That's and then also I'm getting older, dude. Sometimes you gotta pee in the middle of the night because <laughs> that well, you're supposed to be drinking all the water. So like I'm like, okay, I gotta get my water intake. And to get a whole gallon in, dude, I don't do it first thing in the morning. It's over throughout the day. And yeah. sometimes you forget or you work out at night, because sometimes I work out at night. So I drink a lot of water. I'm working out. I like drinking water. Now Shit, I'm getting up at four o'clock to just take a leak. Yeah. Right before the alarm goes off. And what's what's weird, dude, is when I get up, I'm up. I don't I don't wake up groggy. Have you ever been driving along and all of a sudden you feel just eesh, eesh. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? The sun hits you. 
It's just you're 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 you feel so tired, yeah. and you think, what the hell? Do you think that's the food that you ate or something? Is it a crash of some kind? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely a crash. It definitely has to do with with I think how you started your day, what, what you what you ate first thing in in the morning, dictates you know how you're going to feel the rest of the day. So if you're starting your day eating some quality food, you know maybe some some good fats and protein, you're going to be better set for the day rather than getting up and you know straight out of bed going to 200 milligrams of caffeine and some cereal or some donuts or something like that, you're going to be, you're, you're going to for sure feel like you just mentioned all day. Is caffeine no good for you? I think caffeine can have some benefit, but I think too many people rely on it in the wrong way. Like they think they need coffee or caffeine when really, I think it's, it's just, it, it's a mental thing. It's a placebo, it a placebo effect. Cause I mean, you get people drinking coffee before they go to bed at night and they, they're like, I need coffee, but well, it's not doing anything for you. If, if Dude, when I was a kid and this is the truth, they used to give me coffee in second grade. So I'd go to sleep in the, in the class because I, they did not want me awake during class. They gave you coffee to go to sleep. That's insane. In class. Doesn't even make any sense. Well, again, I was supposedly a little bit of a class clown, very disruptive this was back when, you know, schools were like, you know, regular. There was no agendas. Yeah. But I would go to school and my teacher, her name was Mrs. Bassett. She would bring me international foods, Irish mocha. <laughs> and she would let me drink a cup of coffee. She had to get permission from my parents. So it didn't. I mean, if they were still alive, I'd say ask them. But I would drink a cup of coffee in the second grade. Irish mocha, and they would allow me to fall asleep after drinking the coffee. Coffee puts me to sleep. That's wild. It is weird. But there are people that are like that, and that's the truth. And they usually say, well, that's, it's ADD. You have ADD. Well, according to my parents, that's what they said I had. Um, but they refused to give me any Ritalin or any drugs. Well, and that's I don't, good. I, well, I don't believe in, I don't believe in ADD. Yeah, ADHD. I, mean, I don't believe it. I think I think you're. It comes. From, it it stems from what you're eating. I mean, you're if you're eating bad shit, that stuff's going to present. Itself. And not only that, it's like, dude, you know, it's hard to keep someone's attention nowadays with all these different things going around. So you got all these stimulations, and it's like, oh, the little kid's got attention deficit. No, he doesn't. Yeah. You're boring. <laughs> the little kid's not interested in the way you're saying it, the way you're doing it. You know, too much so stimulus. Exactly. There's too much stimulus. So at the end of the day, they just give them drugs. Well, who do you think's happy about that? The drug companies. Yep. Who do you think's lobbying and calling things what they're being called? The drug companies. Exactly. So at the end of the day, I don't think, I don't believe in ADHD or whatever it's called. Well, what you just said right there is part of what I feel, uh, you know, Andy and I are on right now and, and Jackie. Really, really, it's mission oriented. It's, it's, it's a mission to help people wake up and realize that what you're being told is a fucking lie. Well, you know, you know, that's the truth. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, but also too, uh, the goal is within 90 days to get everyone off of every medication they're on. I don't care if you're on it for 10 or 15 years. If you, if you listen to what we say within 90 days, you'll be off of every medication or if not everyone, almost all of them, because it's that simple to get Including off of Cialis. It. Hey, you want to spend an hour a week with me helping you become a business badass? Well, check out my group in the link below. Well, I mean, are you using that as pre-workout or what? <laughs> no, I don't use it, but uh, I was told, maybe it was you. Someone told me, like, dude, just take Cialis every, like, every other day or something, and it's a great vasodilator, and it does this, and it does that, and, you know, it's awesome. Yeah, well, well low-dose Cialis is a good pre-workout. For, Maybe it was you to say that. For dilation. Yeah, it probably was me. Yeah, I was in Mexico. Well, you know that. I, <laughs> I just got back and I was at the I was at the airport and that's the drugstore. My wife goes, go see if they got any Zofran, which is some nausea med medicine. medicine. So I go over there. And I'm like, you got any Zofran? She's like, no. I'm like, no, no nausea medicine? She goes, Dramamine. I'm like, wife says Dramamine. She says, no. I see Cialis sitting there. I said, what about Cialis? She goes, oh, it's $160 for four pills. U.S. What? Yeah, I'm like, what happened to Mexico being the place to get cheap drugs? Yeah, they uh, they're cashing in on it now. Yeah, well, I I, I don't like.
personally taken anything because I believe there's something in everything that causes something else. Yeah. Agreed. 100%. Yeah. So I don't want no Cialis. I don't want no Viagra. I don't want no fucking vasodilator. I don't want nothing but food. Yeah. Let food be thy medicine. I agree. Food is medicine. Yeah. Literally. So to me, it's like, look, you know, people say stay away from steak. I know a heart surgeon that says don't stay away from steak. Eat the shit out of it. Dude, I got, I got my blood work done a few months ago and, uh, <clears throat> I eat two two pounds plus of red meat a day. I eat six to eight whole eggs. Just in that right there, society would tell you, oh, you're for sure going to die. My blood, it, it was literally the best blood panel I've had. My, my triglycerides, my cholesterol was, I mean, this was with Boyd. And he was like, I, I, this is like amazing. Have you done the deep dive? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I did all of it, yeah. Are you flawless? Flawless. I was shocked. The only the only problem I had was I had a big aorta, and I'm like, that's right. Well, I, I got an athlete's heart. I don't know what that is. Yeah, it's I I, I guess I've got some uh, some veins that are really that are bigger than normal that take years to form, which are which are uh, the difference between looking at someone who's conditioned, you know, like an athlete, someone who's worked out their whole life, high intensity type stuff. Um, it was, it was like a really great experience doing doing blind spot. I talk about it in all my stuff because it's the next layer up from blood work because you can be healthy as shit right now. Like the, let's just say the past one or two years, you cleaned up your nutrition, you changed everything, you're in the gym, you get your blood work back, it says you're the healthiest person alive. But the 10 to 15 years prior to that, you drank, you ate crap, you didn't sleep, you know, you lived in stress. You don't know what that did. So this is where you can take it further and, and go into the deep recesses of your organs and find out actually the repercussions of it. And even though your blood work says you are healthy as you can be, that deep dive, you know, blind spot is going to say, well, you've got 20% calcification on your left, you know, ventricle or whatever, whatever it is, you know, kidney damage or liver damage. You or, won't be, or you have cancer. Yeah, you won't be able to see that in, in your blood work. And your brain, too. The brain was a cool one to look at. You ever at. heard of Clark Bartram? Yeah, yeah. You know, he's good always dude. on the covers of magazines. Yeah, he's a good dude. Yeah, I like he, him. He's got prostate cancer now. I had no idea. Dude, his whole life has been six-pack. His big claim to fame is always ready for a magazine cover. Dude will lift up a shirt even today, dude. Boom, six-pack. Carved, shredded. His whole life. Supplements, eating flawless, working out. Prostate cancer. He's well, now he's now raising awareness for it. I think he's called I think his organization is called Check It Like a Man dot org because no. nobody wants their f prostate checked. Prostate's one of those weird those weird organs that so somehow we haven't we don't have a a screening process for it that equals you know what we can find out for kidneys and liver and heart and stuff. Other than sticking the finger in your booty. Yeah, but even that's, you know. Nobody wants to do that. Yeah, I'll pass. That's like a colonoscopy. Like, people need to get one. Yeah. because agreed. Because you could have easily taken care of a problem that could get so bad by not checking that you're now dot dead. There's no way of bringing you back. Where if you had just got a colonoscopy, they would have seen it. It's a polyp or, you know, cancerous, and they would have went in there and t took care of it, and it's totally fixable. Unless, of course, you don't look. And a lot of people, including me, I don't want to look. I don't want a camera in the old bung hole. <laughs> Why? Well, because what they don't tell you is there's a lot of people, not a lot of people, but there's people that can die from that. And the reason why you never hear of anybody dying from it is because they, they don't label it that. It's called septic shock. And it comes from lacerating your colon. And then after it's all over and you go home, they don't know they lacerated it. But yep. they did, and now you get really, really sick, and you die, and you go yep. to the hospital, and they go, what'd they die from? Septic shock. Yep. Well, that was from the fucking colonoscopy, but they don't list it as a colonoscopy death, even though it was one. So it always scares me to go down there and get one, not to mention they're going to stick something in your bung ripper. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What would you say to those people that think like that? That think like what you just said, you don't yeah. want it in there, or you do want it in there? <laughs> they don't. <laughs> I mean, if you if you don't want it in there, see, I, I think this is where fasting can actually come into play and be a benefit. Because but you think there'd be a better test? One hundred percent, there should be. I, I, I'm I'm not a doctor. I'm not a scientist. I, maybe there is. You know, maybe there's stuff out there that I don't know about. But uh, 
yeah, I don't. My my cousin actually died from uh from from being septic from something similar to that. And it's like you go in for a normal procedure, and all of a sudden, next thing you know, you're fucking dying. And then two days later, you, you're at your funeral, or you know, the family's at the funeral. Yeah, because you got a colonoscopy out of nowhere. Yeah. What if you didn't? You'd what, be alive and happy. Or yeah, for who knows how long. So that's why I'm opting for a poop in a box and send it off. And if there's no blood in your stool, you're probably pretty good. Yeah. Now someone's like, oh, they, you can still have polyps. You can still, I know, but guess what? Here's a news flash, everybody. We're all going to die. My question is, is who's going to die first? Me or you? Now, a lot of people say, I'd bet Brad will. He's older and he's worse shape. You could die on the way home, bro. Yeah, for sure. You could find out. And by the way, I had a guy one time he walked up and he said, he kept wanting me to feel this bump on his chest. And like, I'm not homophobic, but I just don't like to feel things. Like, don't tell me to feel something on your body. Um, but apparently it was just a bump that formed on his chest. It was like a bump. He kept saying, hey, feel this, feel this. And other people would feel it. I wouldn't feel it. But he's, everyone said it feels like a little bump, a little marble sitting on his chest. Six months, dude, that dude was dead. So what was it? Cancer, oh. bone cancer. And he was never smoked, never drank, worked out, six pack, lean as fuck, everything right, died anyway. So well, guess what? That's why I say, like, dude, do I really want to be the guy that goes my entire life missing out on maple bars? Yeah. And a and a and a carton of milk when I know people that are like 90 years old. Way out of shape, been eating shit their whole life, and they're ninety five years old. Meanwhile, the buff dude that worked out his whole life is buried and yeah. dead and gone. How do you know? We well, don't, and and you know, in the in the case of uh, you know having six pack and being healthy and stuff, there's a difference between the bodybuilding fitness side of nutrition and what I say. How more, more on the health and longevity side of nutrition. That's right? me, brother. Yeah, because think, think about if, it, you know, competitors, like, and this is where I just kind of bridge the gap in the programming that, that we do at Earn It All, uh, is when you're doing bodybuilding type of prep or fitness prep, you're really just trying to meet macros. You're, that, and that's really it. It doesn't matter the quality of the food. You're trying to meet macros. So you think macros is the key? Well, no. So what I'm saying is you, because you're just trying to meet numbers, through whatever means necessary, those foods in general are not the highest quality foods, meaning they're not nut nutrient wise. There are better options. So that's why with ours, we have people eating the stuff that society tells you not to eat because that's where all the nutrition is in, in the yolk of the egg, in the, in the red meat in the salmon in the Greek yogurt in the, in the mixed fruit and berries versus eating chicken breast every day with broccoli and fucking cereal, you know, to post-workout cereal and stuff. It, it, it can be a compound effect of, yeah, you're meeting macros and your, your body's like your body looks good, but internally you're a wreck. Any, any bodybuilder out there right now, I would be willing to bet if you pulled their blood work across the board, it would look horrible. Even though they look amazing, it would look horrible because on top of that low nutrition, the low quality nutrition that they're putting in their body, they're also on a number of performance enhancing drugs. So that's just a recipe for disaster. And when you do that for an extended period of time, because you do get addicted to anabolics because of the way you look, that's where the body dysmorphia thing comes into play. Um, the, the, the repercussions of what you're doing can be irreversible. So a lot of these fit guys who get older who end up with a lot of these issues, it's because they they didn't they didn't understand nutrition the right way and they didn't understand uh, what was actually happening internally to their organs with with all the things they're eating right cholesterol messing with your heart your arteries and all these things so how's watermelon? Watermelon's good. I, I mean, <laughs> it's not something that I really like recommend anywhere. Maybe, you know, maybe it's a good. Uh, but if you want to eat a whole watermelon, can you? If you're going to eat a whole watermelon, if there was any time of the day, I would say to eat it. We would be like after a crazy workout session just to replen replenish those glycogen stores. 
Well, you only got 20 minutes of glycogen. Well, it depends on how much, how many carbs you're getting. If you're, if I you, thought, I thought now again, I thought you, you have glucose in your bloodstream. Uh -huh. You have glycogen, which is stored sugar. Mm -hmm. And you have lean muscle and fat. There's only those sources of energy. Yeah. Sugar, stored sugar, lean muscle, fat. Those are the only four things that your body will burn for energy. Yeah. So if you l cut out all sugars, you still have stored sugar, which is glycogen, 20 minute reserve in your body. So you go to work out for 20 minutes, you're just burning stored sugar from the day before usually. Right. And, and, and honestly, it depends on what kind of nutrition that you're in too. If you're, if you got someone who's into like a deep zero carb nutrition protocol, then that's going to be a different, that's going to be a different scenario. Cause so they might have less than 20 minutes. I mean, again, I'm not a scientist, but in all my workings with, with my clients, when I take someone who's in that, in that deficit of carbohydrates and they're training fasted and their, and their results are horrid and I change it up and I'm like, add in some fruit, add in so, something else. Like you can't do what you're doing right now to get the results you want. It changes everything. They're like, man, I, all that's all it was. I haven't felt this good in fucking two years because I've been doing the same shit, and it's like I couldn't figure out why. And it was something as simple as just giving your body a little bit of something more than it needed. Eat some grapes. Some grapes, some some berries, some, I don't know, an apple. Yeah, see, dude, you make me want to do your diet because, like, it ain't just chicken and broccoli. Tune yeah. out of a can. This isn't, this isn't, for me, it's not about uh, meeting macros, and it's not about getting up on a stage to compete. It's about taking someone, and in, in, in the case of the people I work with now, the ones who are high performers, CEOs, you know, executives who are just literally on the go and have tunnel vision and work, and they can't even think about food and nutrition. It's like, all right, well, let me think, let me tell you how to eat the right way that's going to make you feel like you're not on a diet. And by the way, if you travel a lot, you can get it anywhere. So that's kind of the default that we've created in our in our meal program is because of how much we've traveled, it's put a lot of perspective into, all right, well, this makes sense now. Like I can really help people on, on, on the travel schedule, um, figure out the right foods to eat on the go, no matter where you are, no matter what country you're in. Yeah. And then, and then you, you said to take dim, I'd never even heard of dim. Dim makes you pee orange, by the way. <laughs> Did you know that? Yeah. It's, it's just something that helps. You know, it's a natural over-the-counter supplement. But, but you should have told me. Because <laughs> the first thing you did is, is you know, how when you take one, you might as well take two. So I took two one time. And I got off an airplane, and I'm pissing in a toilet. And I'm thinking, oh, should I go see a doctor, dude? It was like dark orange. And I started freaking out because, like, that could be blood in your urine. Yeah. And, guys, if you have blood in your urine or in your stool, it ain't supposed to be there. Not supposed to be there. Like, I don't get it when someone's bleeding out their ass and they're like, you know, I'm going to see if it'll go away. Like, brother. Unless it's a hemorrhoid. I don't care what it is. It ain't supposed to be there. Yep. Like, dude, thank God I don't bleed out my ass and I don't bleed into my urine. So there's no bleeding going on, hopefully. But when, when, when there is blood and you don't even realize it is blood, because sometimes people don't realize it's blood. You know, you got dark spots in your stool. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's blood. Yep. You just think it's dark shit. Well, it isn't. And then in, in the piss, dude, it comes out dark yellow or even orange. So, dude, I had freaking my stomach dropped. I thought I had blood in my urine. And and dim, I look up and it says, yeah, you turn your piss orange. I'm like, oh, thank God. It was dim. That's but, my fault. I should have told you that. But I haven't taken a, I haven't taken a blood test. It was supposed to be today, but I didn't fast. They didn't tell me to fucking fast. So... I'm going to schedule it for next week, but I haven't taken any blood tests since. So I'm going to do a blood dump and get my blood taken this week. And then I'll tell you if that dim worked or okay. not. All right. But the magnesium did. So that's why I was asking about supplementation. Cause there's a lot of people out there that are wasting money buying shit. They just don't need. Mm -hmm. What does a fella need on a regular basis on a daily basis? So they can take, I mean, you're taking 50 pills. Do you need all those or no? Well, for me, you know, it's, I, I know the nutrition, like my nutrition every day is the same. <clears throat> I've, I've mapped it out in terms of, uh, knowing what I'm deficient in that I can supplement for. I'm looking for, 
I'm, I'm an extreme athlete, so to speak, right? I'm really trying to push my body to the limit because there's a certain look that I'm trying to achieve in, in the most natural way I, I possibly can. Um, so you have to look at food as your first source of supplementation. And whatever you're not getting from food is what you should be supplementing. And that's what a supplement is, a supplement to your nutrition or a supplement to your training. So uh, there's, a, there's an app out there called Chronometer. It's a pretty good app. You can write everything in uh, in the app throughout the whole day, you know, from the water you drink, add your training in, all the food that you eat over the course of a day, and it'll actually spit out some, some different metrics in terms of like uh, antioxidants, minerals, um, electrolytes, it'll give you percentages, you know, electrolytes are 78%. And then you can intentionally start to supplement based on if I'm eating the same thing every day, this is what I'm, I'm deficient in. So I can, I can, maybe I'm deficient in manganese or I need some extra beta carotene or something. But again, that's, that, that's only if you're consistent with what you're eating, because if you're eating garbage all day, then you, it doesn't matter what supplement you take. It's, you know, it's it's a lost cause because un- until you change your nutrition and get rid of all the inflammation and actually give your body the right things to eat, the seed oils, the fat, like everything's going to just sit there and pull in your body and create toxicity. So um, eat intentional, and then you can figure out which, what your body's deficient in, and that's what you'll supplement with. And if somebody's listening to this and they want to get in shape and they're tired of waiting around, all they got to do is join your ass, and you'll show them exactly what to eat on a daily basis, exactly what to do at the gym. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And get their asses in shape. Yeah. And it, like I say, there are different, different levels of programming that we have. We have customized programs that are more, more one-on-one. We have goal-based programs. The goal-based programs, you know, when I first came over to, to work with Andy, I sat down with, with my team, Justin and Adam and the earn it all guys. And we, we just went through soup to nuts on everything they had. And we tweaked everything to at, to take their brains and my brains and mesh those together to create the most comprehensive 90-day programs you can have, which, again, is why our results on our 90-day programs are so dramatic because we're doing things a little bit differently than most people, and we just fucking care. It's not a, it's not all about the money for us. I mean, w- what you're getting in 90 days for 597, you won't find anywhere. I guarantee it. Um, the community, the calls... Everything across the board. So we six hundred bucks is all it is. That's it. We provide so much value. We uh, we 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 just created a new uh, Mighty Networks channel that's going to be free that people can join up. And it's it's a, I mean, you could get in that Mighty Networks database and literally go for weeks going down the rabbit holes of reading all the different articles that we've provided. Um, it, it it's going to provide a lot of value that that we can give people who can't afford our programs, you know what I mean? Because there's some people who can't afford 600 bucks a month. It's a shitty economy. Dude, if you can't afford 600 bucks a month, then join my program, (laughs) folks, Real Coaching. Matter of fact, Andy and I were talking down there about what kind of change was needed. I'm, we're about ready to launch something. Your, your division will be a part of it, obviously, because you can't, you can't really win unless you're fucking all categories, you know, health being one of them. A lot of people don't realize how important health actually is. You well, know, that's why I say, well, Brad, you don't always healthy. You're kind of fat. I know, but dude, don't, don't let me just because I'm succeeding mean that that's the right way to do it. You know, I succeed in spite of myself. See what I'm saying? Like I've been getting girls <laughs> since I was young, even fat. So it didn't bother me. Now, if, I, if girls didn't like me and I wasn't able to win and I wasn't able to succeed and man, I, I, let me try getting in shape and I got in shape and all of a sudden I got girls and I started winning. Well then, you know, obviously clues are like, dude, be in shape. Yeah. But I've always been successful, even a little bit pudgy, even a little bit lazy, even a little bit, you know, half-assed if you, if you want to know the truth. But that doesn't mean it's the right way to do it. It just means that it's possible. So when someone says, oh, you have to be in shape or you can't succeed, bullshit. I've seen a lot of successful fat guys. Yeah. Well, how do you define success? Aha, that's that's the question. Because it isn't looking like this, even though that's a bonus. You guys go look up old fucking Aaron. You guys will be like, <laughs> damn, dude. But it ain't looking like that, that that is what I want, even though that's a great bonus. 
it's health and longevity. Mm -hmm. It's health and longevity. If someone said, Brad, start eating like Aaron tells you to eat, period, and, and we have a crystal ball, and it is fact, you will live 21 more years. No one would have to say another motherfucking word. Yep. I'd just do it. And when someone says, why do you eat that way? Because I want to live as long as possible, and that's the way to live as long as possible. But just because I'm winning, being a little bit chunky sometimes and slacking doesn't mean you should. There's people out there that won't win because they can't mentally get it down. I'm one of the lucky ones that can, you know, dial it in over here, but not over here. I can yeah. slack over here, but not over here. That's why when that saying you ever heard how you do one thing is how you do everything. I always disagree with that. I don't believe that, you know, I don't play basketball very well, but I fuck like a porn star. <laughs> <laughs> okay. When when you walk into a room in shape, the conversation is just different automatically. Oh yeah. People people look at you, and the first thing that go through their mind, they know you're committed. They know you're disciplined. They know you care about yourself. There's a sense of responsibility that is automatically there. Hundred percent. So, <clears throat> you've never been as long as I've known you. I, I've never seen you out of shape. I mean, out of shape? Well, I mean, you're not, I know you're not where you want to be, but you don't walk in and you're like, oh, that motherfucker's fat. Well, I've never been like obese, obese. Yeah. No. But, you, but you're just a, you're a big guy. So you, you hold your not so good weight well, I guess is what I'm saying. So it doesn't have, it doesn't have the same impact as someone who's coming in there and, you know, their, their belly's flipping their pants over and you can't see your dick. No, I've never been that way. Now, yeah. I will tell you though, I'm starting to, I'm starting to look in the mirror at a glance real quick and like, I got to do a double take <laughs> like, damn, that me. Yeah. Cause like, I'm starting to get the, the lines back. Like there's a, there's an actual crease on my chest all the way up. Dude, there was a time where there was no crease on my chest. It went to here and then just stopped. And then there was just bone plate. <laughs> <laughs> bone plate. <laughs> yeah. It was like this. Where there was, there was no crease, there was no line, there was no nothing. You, you couldn't tell that there was two. They're supposed to look like there's two plates there. It looked like there was two uh, parts down here, but then when it got up to about right here, it just kind of fused into bone plate, sternum. That's a good one. I've never heard it. I've never heard it explained like that before. Yeah, but like now there's starting to be a fucking crease there. Like yeah. when I pull down my shirt, there's a crease there. I can, I can, I can feel it going like this. I can feel it right now. So like that's when it's starting to like, okay, I'm starting to look good. Well, once you start to look good, that's when the momentum kicks in. Where now you can fucking power through those uncomfortable days. Why? Mm -hmm. Because you're seeing the payoff. Mm -hmm. So the only thing I tell people out there that are listening to something like this is, you got to do it long enough. To, to see, and that's the problem with most people. They want to see it immediately. You go to the gym for two weeks, you're not going to see it. You go to gym for three weeks, you're going to start not really seeing it either. It's usually the sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth week that you start noticing. And it's not even you that notices so much. It's other people. And then probably about 90 days, you look in the mirror and you're like, fuck yeah. I'm looking good. That's when the momentum kicks in. That's when people go a year. So all I tell people is, look, 90 days. Do it for 90 days. I've been drunk longer than that. Yep. 90 days is nothing for, compared to the rest of your life. To go give it 90 days. If after 90 days, you're like, no, this didn't work. These guys are full of shit. You lost 600 bucks. I'll bet you the 600 bucks. You should do a money back guarantee almost. Well, something to think about too, <clears throat> with what you're saying about 90 days, it's important that before you start any type of program that you get your blood work, because if you start a program and you're four or six weeks in and you're not seeing any change, go check your blood. Chances are there's something in your blood work that's going to tell you what's wrong. So you've basically spent the first month, month and a half with minimal results based on you know, something simple that we could have fixed at the beginning. So if you come into it with the right, um, with the right framework, meaning blood work, we can look at it and then actually put like figure out, okay, well you, we recommend this, this, and this, and something as simple as that, maybe some iodine for thyroid, maybe, maybe, you know, maybe there's some simple things to boost your testosterone, some supplements, or there's just so many little things that can be fixed up front that can set you in the right frame to get the results week by week. Because on our program, the ones who 
are optimal starting out. I mean, it is literally week to week changes across the board. You can see it in the weekly photos. Um, the feedback, the the conversations that they're having with their employees and their families, they're like, what are you doing? It's only two weeks in, it's three weeks in, it's five weeks in. It's consistent results across the board, but they're the ones who came into it knowing that they need to do something that they haven't done before. And for what we do, we try and help push you to your limit. Because if you can push yourself to your limit and you've never been there before, you're going to have a lot of growth there in so many different ways, mentally, physically, spiritually. There's just so much stuff that's going to come into it. That ain't no lie. Folks, if you guys ain't already figured it out, this dude's training the movie stars to get in shape. Now he's training the legions with the Elliott Army over there. And, and I, I'm telling you, if you guys go down there, you'll see the, the shit works. What, how do they get a hold of you? Text by text? Yeah, text dropping bombs to 602-900-8703. You'll also see it in the description. And then, or go to earnitallacademy.com. Earnitallacademy.com. Get yourself in shape. And if you guys uh, follow me religiously or Andy Elliott or now Aaron Williamson, you'll see something launching around January 1st that I've already talked Andy into. I got to sit down with you and figure out the details to just include it in that. Hell yeah. Where that just automatically is part of what we're doing. Okay. Because dude, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a fundamental pillar in being successful. Health is the foundation of health. everything. Without health, dude, you'd give up all your money to get your health back if yep. that was the issue. So to me, it's health, relationships, money, family, love, all these other things. But if you don't have your health, bro, none of the rest matter. Yep. So anyway, thanks for coming on, buddy. Thanks Appreciate for- you coming all the way up here. I made it. Now that you're down in Scottsdale. Do you know people here you're going to go visit while you're here? Yeah. Yeah. My my uh, my buddy, do you know Stan Efferding? No. He's a, he's a monster of a, a power lifter bodybuilder. I'm going to oh. go see him right now and eat some food, catch up. Right on. Yeah. Hey, folks, as always, until next time, keep it real. At the end of your life, when you're sitting in bed, you're not going to be worried about your cars and your money. I promise you that. You're going to be worried about relationships, the people in your life, the relationships, the people that you love. That's who you're going to be worried about when you're on a deathbed. You don't think about money at all. I went to one of these blind spot, it's called Blind Spot Medical, Dr. David Boyd. He'll appreciate me giving him a shout out. If anybody here's got money and you wanna 